It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Well, President. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you, great, Mr. Kukarian. Yes, Pittsburgh. How do you do? Fine. Real nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. General you. Nutrition uh, Food Business. Mr. Ognani. Mr. President, I'm so happy to see you. Pretty great pleasure. He's a builder of thousands of homes in New Jersey and Florida. Dave Fisher. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. I'm still wearing a suit. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Archie Dracanian. Remember we had a, an event at his home. That was his uh, Archie's home. Mr. President, I'm going to serve Barry Zorn. Barry Zorn. The Gray and Company. Gray and Company. Gray and Company here in Washington. But the President's heard of that. Well, <laughs> you know, Ken Pachigan. Hey, don't break the camera, Mr. President. Maybe at the start of this session uh, with you, that uh, everybody would we'd go around, and everybody would quickly uh, indicate who they are and the organization they represent, so you have a little idea of the breadth of the group. And then, if I may, Faith and I will summarize what's happened uh, prior to your being here, and then uh, let you and the group have a discussion. So well, I know the breadth of the group because I read all your names <laughs> and your affiliations <laughs> here, but uh, I don't. Put, can't put the faces with the name. Do you want to start in? The I'm Virgil Deccan with the Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, I'm Pete Gallagher, Executive Director of the New York State Federation of Catholic School Parents. I'm Herb Titus with the Christian Broadcasting Network. <coughs> Marilyn Lundy, President of Citizens for Education of Freedom. Uh, Lundy Fury, Superintendent of Catholic Schools in the Archdiocese of Washington. I'm Dick Dingman, I'm Legislative Director of the Moral Majority. 
Brother Jack Myers, the President of the National Catholic Educational Association. I'm Andy Whitcomb, former governor of Indiana, and with Accelerated Christian Education, and I appreciate you coming here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good to see you again. We were governors together a number of years. I'm Paul Weirich of Coalitions for America. I'm Kirby Jacoby, Louisiana Federation of Citizens for Education and Freedom. Greg Butler, National Pro Family Coalition. <clears throat> Frank Monahan, U.S. Catholic Conference, and I'm also sitting in for Bob Smith, the Executive Director of the Council of American Private Education. Father Ron Anderson from the United States Catholic Conference. Bill Billings, the National Christian Action Coalition. Mr. President, I'm Bob Dugan with the National Association of Evangelicals. Don Howard with Accelerated Christian Education. We're going there. With them. Menachem Lubinsky with the Buddhist Israel of America. I'm Dennis Collins with the Jesuit Secondary Education Association. I'm Ed Anthony with the United States Catholic Conference. Well, I'm glad to have you all here. And I know the last time we met was in, uh, many of us in a meeting of this kind, it was September 16th, and two months later to the day. And, we had a vote in the Senate, which was a disappointing vote. But at least in one way it represented an accomplishment because for the first time we had an up and down vote and we know uh, where the bodies are now. But if I could just take a few minutes and then I'd like to hear your own suggestions and hear from you. Uh, we do not accept that vote as the final word on tuition tax credits. We're determined to keep after this. I think we must be careful and not precipitately just to get a vote and go again and risk another defeat. I think we ought to uh, take some action to see if the next one won't be successful. <coughs> and on that score, I, I wonder if, uh, while it is necessary to, to lobby the Congress, I wonder if it isn't also necessary for a very stepped up campaign at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. I have often said, uh, don't make them see the light, make them feel the heat. And uh, I think that we have a case out there. I don't know whether you're aware of this, but as far back as 1945, a poll was taken of the American people, and 57% of them in the poll believed in tuition tax credits. Now the most recent poll, Today is 67 percent. 67 percent now support this idea. <coughs> Here in Washington, you're up against one of the most powerful and sophisticated lobbying machines, the National Education Association. And very frankly, uh, uh, I don't mind saying my own view on them is that it's not just tuition tax credits they're against. I think that their goal has been for a number of years the elimination of schools like yours mm -hmm. and the elimination of the local system. They want a national yes, school right. system. And uh, I don't think it would be right that little Willie's mother would have to go to Congress instead of going to the principal of the local school <laughs> with her problem. But the, I think we've got to work at the federal level, but also with the Supreme Court decision on that Minnesota ruling, I think uh, this is a time also to step up the action at the state level. And if we get the number of states that are already moving on that, that has a powerful effect uh, at, the, at the federal level. But we're going to try, and we're going to keep working on this. And could I suggest, you've probably already thought of these and are using them, but could I suggest two, uh, two things or two ideas that I think we should be selling to the people of this country? One, I believe that Americans are basically fair, and I think, again, we should emphasize the fact that we're talking about people who are paying double. They're not utilizing the one school system they're paying for, and uh, they're not complaining about that. They are uh, financing another school system. But on top of that, appealing to people's pocketbooks, the idea that the NEA has succeeded in planting an idea among the people, and certainly here in Congress, that some way this would represent taking money from the public school system. Well, it wouldn't. But the idea that could defeat that, licking something with something, is that if the people have called to their attention that de 
if your schools close because of financial hardship, this is going to dump an additional burden on the local schools, but it is not going to increase the number of people who are financing that schools with their taxes, mm -hmm. because they're already financing the schools with those taxes. And this is one that I think we should uh, hit the people with very hard, that what would be the situation of public education if suddenly thousands and thousands of students were turned over to that system and with no additional revenues uh, to support them. And with that, I'll, I'll turn to you for ideas and suggestions. Mr. Yes. President, uh, in Louisiana, waiting for the sound to get a little less. I just wanted to say something, and then I'm not going to take any more questions or anything. i am got to get aboard and go to Indianapolis. But I just wanted to say something about uh, this supposed break-off of negotiations in START and call to your attention that the Soviet Union, this was a regular adjournment that was scheduled to take place. And the Soviet Union, in departing, simply said that they were not prepared at this time to set a date for resumption of meetings. But I thought also that it might be a pretty good time to state our own position on this and why we are going to continue attempting these negotiations. It was just 30 years ago today, on December 8, 1953, that President Dwight Eisenhower made a speech on this very subject of nuclear weapons. And in that speech, he said, to the making of these fateful decisions, the United States pledges before you its determination to help solve the fearful atomic dilemma, to devote its entire heart and mind to find a way by which the miraculous inventiveness of man shall not be dedicated to his death, but consecrated to his life. And this administration endorses this view completely, and this is what we are dedicated to. You're not concerned about the break-off at this time? I know it was the end of the talks, but yes. it also sounds very uh, tough and final. Well, other than in this one, I think if, if you, 
they're pretty careful about their choice of words. And all they said in this one was that they were not prepared at this time to set a date for when they would come back. And you're convinced they will. I am very hopeful they will. I think this is more encouraging than a walkout uh, and simply saying they won't be back. Will uh, Schultz meet Gromyko in uh, Sweden? Wait a second. Do you think that Secretary Schultz will meet Gromyko in Sweden? Uh, he is taking that up with the ministers right there now, and uh, I would support such a thing. I think that it would be, and that would sort of answer your question, too. I think there's some preparation. There's been no indication from them of any desire uh, for such a meeting, but uh, Senator or Secretary Schultz meets uh, uh, Gromyko in Stockholm at that meeting, and we have not been out of touch. We have kept in communications at a number of levels. Mr. President, we better get on the given to moving the Marines away from the airport in Beirut. Uh, there has been some talk for a long time about a change in assignments there, and uh, that still goes on. You, Thank you, sir. Would you like them to approve that, changing their position in Beirut? It, it is a move that is, is done in, uh, dovetailed in with the Lebanese military force, and uh, I don't know what the military problems are or what they, uh, what they might be resolving right now.